Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. This is going to be about hair porosity. So I don't talk too much about hair porosity on my channel, but it is important in terms of product application and potentially products that you are choosing for your hair. So for me, I have done the porosity test many years ago, a long, long time ago, probably almost six to eight years ago. And when I did it, it said that I have low porosity. So what is the porosity test? You simply take a couple of your hair strands out of your head, strands that are clean, no product on it, and you put it into a cup of water. You let the strands sit in the water. If the, after a, you know, a length of time, the strands are still floating, you have low porosity if they're kind of like in the water roll like that medium porosity if your strands have gone straight to the bottom of the cup they fully sank high porosity so i wanted to try this test again to see if i do indeed still have low porosity hair so what i did was i washed my hair as i normally do two shampoos with my regular tresemme shampoo it cleans my hair really really well and doesn't leave any residue in the hair as well because remember your strands need to be clean and then i detangled my hair and the hair from my tangle teaser brush i took out and i put it in a cup of water and i let the hair sit for one hour this is what it looks like And after one hour, the hair was still floating on the top, which means I do still have low porosity hair. Thank God it hasn't like changed or I was wrong this entire time. So yes, I do still have low porosity hair. Okay, so now that we know that we have a low porosity, what is porosity? It is simply your hair's ability to soak up and retain moisture and hair products. So the way our hair strands are, they have cuticles on the outer layer just like how we have cuticles on our nails those cuticles open up like the shingles on a roof and they close down uh, so when they open up we're going to let in product and moisture and when they go down nothing can really get in or it's a little bit harder to penetrate so for instance things like he can open up the cuticles, you know, warm up the strands, open up the cuticles, let moisture, let products in, and then things like soaking our hair in cold water or putting a product on our strands to kind of seal that outer layer closes them down, so flattens them out. So heat, open up, cold, seals it. That's why they say to rinse your hair in cold water to seal your cuticles, help them close up, lay flat, which kind of helps you get a little bit more shine as well. And then a lot of the times when you have tighter, kinky, coilier, wavier textures, those cuticles kind of overlap each other and then it's even harder for moisture and product to penetrate. And then that's why we, people with curly hair, are always like our hair is just naturally dry. And it makes sense. It's because our cuticles are overlapping and it's so hard, so much harder for us to get the moisture in our hair, for us to retain moisture. As a result, our hair feels dry. We experience a lot of breakage. So what do we do? So what we don't want is our hair ever looking weighed down or heavy or feeling greasy or just like product overload and we don't want dryness. So a great thing that I like to do and I try to incorporate as often as possible is incorporating steam. So finding ways to add heat into your routine to help open up your cuticles. That's why when you see me deep conditioning my hair, I'll put like the plastic bag on and then a bonnet on and I'm walking around the house doing chores, moving my body, warming up my body, warming up my head and my scalp, and the hair is actually warmer once I take the plastic bag off. So I know those strands heat it up and I'm not using additional heat to the hair. Cause you guys know I like to put a lot of heat in my hair anyways, but if you can buy an actual hair steamer, that's a great option. Or if you do have like those little facial steamers, you can use that as well. Or sometimes just getting a blow dryer, not necessarily putting it directly on the hair, 
but like putting some type of plastic cap and then a blow dryer attachment and then letting that heat go in towards the bag to kind of heat up the hair, open up the cuticles, let the awesome ingredients and benefits of whatever product you're using penetrate into your hair makes the hair so much more softer and that is once again why i like to deep condition my hair for at least 15 to 30 minutes an hour is great because i do have low porosity hair it is going to take longer for any product whether that's a leave-in product or a conditioner to penetrate my hair and for me to see any difference so I have to make sure I am giving my hair enough time. I can't just put something on my hair and expect it to have penetrated in two minutes and then rinse out as a lot of the time packaging suggests you do. And then another thing that I like to do because I do have low porosity hair is making sure my hair is thoroughly cleansed. I do not like product buildup. That's another thing. On top of having low porosity hair, you're gonna find that no new products are going to work the way that you are hoping they do. So making sure that you are thoroughly cleaning your strands, clean out the product, clean out the residue and gunk. As you are opening up the cuticles when you are shampooing your hair, it is a great way to make sure moisture and products can penetrate your hair. So adding heat or steam, making sure your hair is clean. And the third thing that I do is use light or weight hair products. You would think, oh, I have low porosity hair. It's harder for products yeah. to absorb into my strands. I should use something really thick and heavy. Mm. No, that's just a recipe for disaster. It's gonna take way too long for my strands to absorb any of it. So for me, I use really light weight products that have really good moisture in it and of course that is my Cantu daily oil moisturizer it is light enough to use every day depending on how you are styling your hair i don't use it every single day because i'm doing a lot of heat styles i apply it once and it just lasts in my hair it's so soft so lightweight it has a more liquidy consistency but I apply it in my hair, not too heavy handed yeah. unless I'm doing a protective style, oh, a nice yeah. light even coat and make sure I am working it into the hair from the roots down to the ends yeah. within the balls and chunks of the hair so that no strand is left untouched. And then when I'm done styling my hair or I'm done blow drying my hair or whatever, my hair does not feel dry. Um, a lot of the times we think, oh, let's just apply to the ends or let's just apply to the top or the outer parts of our hair and we finish our hair. And then we have all these weird, dry, crispy, crunchy spots. And it's because we haven't made sure that the moisture that we're applying to the hair was evenly applied. And that is the three big ways I kind of deal with having low porosity hair. Of course, there are products that are geared towards low porosity hair. I would suggest you your research, look into them, experiment within reason, of course, because products are expensive. <laughs> Um, and you will find what's best for your hair. And then of course, if you have medium porosity hair or high porosity hair, what you kind of do with your routine will be a little bit different. But I only know how to manage my low porosity hair and it seems to be working well for me. I do try my best to avoid drying out my hair because dryness equals breakage, which means less length retention and we are on our healthy hair growth challenge journey and I want to keep my hair healthy and long. So that is my thoughts and my little spiel on having oh. low porosity hair. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below what kind of hair you have. Do you know if you have low, medium, high? Have you ever tried the porosity test where you're putting your hair in water? Let me know. Let's start a conversation. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.